had a great mother that I discovered. I eventually met my birth father when I was 15. And, and, um, and then look back on my life, it was a back alley life. And I was, you know, I blew my fingers off because I didn't know I was playing with dynamite. And instead of winding up under a table with a sock in my hand, my mother said, well, you can approach it that way or you can say, okay. And she read me stories about people lost their arms, learned how to play a violin with their feet and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So I think the seeds of what happened in terms of success in life have to go there. My mother had become a Christian and I was a hedonist for the first 20 years. And when I finally chased the cheerleader into a tent meeting and came out the other side without a two pack a day smoke habit, and never took the Lord's name in vain again after that. And it was every five words before that. I think you look back at that, you know that God has his hand on you, whom he foreknew, he predestinated, he, he, he then assigned to things. I'm at Seattle Pacific, you want to know the real answer because God called me here through Dr. McKenna, through Dr. Randall. The 78 championship, that was against the Nigerian national team masquerading as Alabama A&M. I mean, those Nigerians and Zairians and, and uh, players that are on that team, I remember saying to Jamie Deming, our captain, I said, uh, you know, if we, try to, if we try to mark these guys, they'll give us pneumonia from the breeze. They'll go by us like, you know, so many standing parking. And all I did was write awesome capital letters across the blackboard. I said, these guys are awesome. I said, they're the fastest, sleekest, most beautiful athletes I've ever seen. They beat a tremendously strong uh, foreign Eastern Illinois team in the semifinal, uh, five nothing, which was what their average was that year. And they, and they did that after we played our game and went into two overtimes, including a hailstorm in Miami, that we won one nothing against Connecticut, which was a tremendous game. Well, and then those days you didn't have a day between, so we had to play the very next day. Well, give me a break. I was on my knees at three in the morning asking the Lord to keep the score in single digits. But we had a plan. We played a unique deal. There was a two-back game in those days. We came out with five backs and four midfielders and one forward, Jimmy McKay. Without him, we called him Velcro. You could hit a ball in his chest at 100 miles an hour with a stick. Uh, Eric Benz could throw a ball from here to Chicago. Um, and Mark Metzger and his midfielders, and Ricky Miller as the most valuable defensive player, and Sergio Soriano. Sergio is the Cuban, last Cuban to come over. He's 13 months old from Cuba to Miami, and we found him down there. And uh, when he saw our team, he came to me, he says, Coach, I'm coming next year, we'll win a national championship. Because he witnessed our second place finish against Alabama in AMM in 77, because he was, he was in Miami as well. And I said, if we can somehow keep them at bay for maybe 60 minutes, international players get upset if they can't do what they're supposed to do. If you jump in and bite, you're coming to the bench. But if you just keep that so they can't find their way in, uh, then I think we might have a chance. Well, it didn't take 60 minutes. 15 minutes in, they're complaining. Give me the ball. They're standing still. They're not running anymore because they don't know where to go. It was a tribute to the strength of that inner core which transcended names it transcended whether you're a starter or a finisher whether you're going to come up there was no such thing as a substitute on our teams all through those years if you're a substitute you're going to sit someplace up and if you say to me i'll try i say go sit in the bench i i want the guy that says i'll do it and if you don't there was plenty of creativity efforts for us to explain why we didn't do it the 93 championship, on the other hand, is completely at the other end because we were loaded with unbelievable players. The twins, J Jason and James Dunn, uh, Nate Delagon, uh, Marcus Hahnemann in goal, uh, and uh, Caleb and, and Travis Canal. Travis now just had won the national championship up in Western. Um, and I could go down the line, and obviously when you start down the line, you don't have a list in front of you, you start missing. But that was unbelievable because the semifinal game was not possible. And that's the game after a full game, four overtimes, being behind two goals with a minute and one second to go. And if we don't tie it up, the game's over. We tie it up in 61 seconds. And we go into two more sudden death overtime, or sudden victory we call it. And then 10 rounds of penalty kicks, 13 rounds of penalty kicks, and winning it the 10 to nine. Uh, and one English writer covering the nine Lee by the Sea players playing for Florida Institute of Technology uh, said in his article the next morning, this is not the greatest football game I've ever seen. 
this is the greatest football game ever played. And everybody had to agree with it. And that was just the semifinal. When you're honored by your family, and this was my family, this is where the, you know, the greater portion of my life was spent or invested. I don't think it's an expenditure. There's no way you can minimize or in any way um, diminish the, 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 the pieces, the ingredients for such an honor. Success wasn't something I ever bought into in the world's definition. What I did then, I still do now, is you go out there and you expend every ounce of energy you have in doing what the biblical imperative really not even suggests but demands you do. And, uh, and I think that was the, I never thought about it consciously. It was just part of me after I came to know the Lord. It was basically, it didn't matter whether it was running a tractor or driving an Uber now or whether it was, uh, you know, being the president of, uh, of a company. As you go to that, you do that job as if that's the only thing left in your life. And I would hope each guy that ever played for us here at Seattle Pacific would remember that I always said, uh, that uh, this team is, it, the motivating principle for this team is playing for the glory of God. You might not even know who God is. And God may not be part of your life even today. But that doesn't change the fact that this team and this program is dedicated to the effort to glorify God. And maybe at some point you'll understand what that means. So I think if there's anything that ultimately becomes the stamp at the bottom of the roll or the scroll, it would be we were uh, tracking with uh, in the same tracks that Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, the rest of them. And if that's legacy, then I'd be happy to have that stamp.